Hello, I've travelled to the Lower Derwent Valley National Nature Reserve to encounter some of its mysterious nocturnal inhabitants, moths. However, because I'm pretty impatient, I'm not going to go searching for them, I'm going to bring the moths to me using the power of light. Sneaky. This is a moth trap, a giant plastic box with a bulb on top. Let's see what happens when we leave it on and wait for it to get dark. As you can see, there are plenty of moths fluttering around, like butterflies of the night, which raises an important question about these creatures. Just what is the difference between a moth and a butterfly at the adult stage? Let's find out. The short answer is that there isn't one. Moths and butterflies are both part of the order Lepidoptera, but their division is largely a subjective one. Well, that answers that question. Time for some Jaffa Cakes. Nighty night. Uh, <laughs> a little bit embarrassing. David says we need to do the long answer to the question as well. And as he's the boss, I guess we should give it a shot. The first thing I should say is that you can't make any conclusion as to whether it's a moth or a butterfly based on whether it's flying by day or at night. In the UK, there are more species of day flying moth than there are species of butterfly. Some butterflies, such as red admirals, can even migrate at night. You also can't go by colour. Moths are often thought to be small, brown and boring, and here are a few clips of my favourite boring brown moths. So, what does that leave us with? Wings. Specifically, the wing resting position. Generally, butterflies rest with wings out flat, or closed above them. Moths tend to hold theirs over their back, like a tent. There are exceptions, and one of the most obvious are the skipper butterflies, which look like a halfway house between butterflies and moths. Next, look at the body size. Generally, Butterflies have thin, dainty bodies, compared with the chunkier, sometimes hairier bodies of moths. The bodies of moths can sometimes verge on resembling a small mammal. Also take a close look at the antennae. European butterflies have clubbed antennae, which end in a blob. Technical term there. Moths generally have thin antennae, tapering to a point, or, in the case of males, feathered antennae. The feathering increases the surface area for detecting pheromones, chemical signals from the females that broadcast a message of Oi! Over here, stupid! As usual, there are exceptions, with the most obvious one being the day-flying burnet moths. Finally, a key difference is one you'll never see, unless you dissect your specimen, which we don't recommend, as they tend not to enjoy it. In most moths, the hind wings are joined to the forewings by a hook-like structure called a frenulum. Butterflies don't have this, apart from one exception, a skipper in Australia. So, in conclusion, if you can't decide whether it's a butterfly or a moth, look at the wings, the body size and hairiness, and the antennae, and that should help you reach a conclusion. Well, that was the short and long answer to the issue of moths versus butterflies. But regardless of how we classify them, moths don't care. They just carry on being incredible. That's all from me and my moffy friends. Until next time.